This is a Thor News presentation. Thor News presents Comet C-2012 S-1 Ison and WTF NASA. Seriously, bro. Part 23. All hands on deck. Deep impact up next. And we got a fat flying V in the sun. We love the V. Okay, let's go. All hands on deck. That's right. They liked it and they wanted it so much they put every single camera they could find on it under the banner of a coordinated observing program called NASA Comet Ice and Observing Campaign or NCIOC. Dozens of observatories on the ground in space and even on sounding rockets and high altitude balloons will watch the comet progress towards the sun this fall. International workshop to coordinate observation. It was held at the John Hopkins University Applied Physics Lab in Maryland. Team members from several Interplanetary missions join colleagues, kind of like astonishers. That's what a colleague is. Ground, balloon, plane, rocket, orbit based telescopes to help. And I'm sure Sophia, the big telescope that's flying around in a plane by the South Pole, looking at gosh knows what. Sophia Loren was hot. And we are all waiting for Ison to return to sight from behind the sun's glare and for Comet Ison to hit the frost line. That's supposed to be something special. The frost line, also known as the snow line or ice line, refers to a particular distance in the solar nebula from the central proto-sun. The term is borrowed from the notion of frost line in soil science. No. Soil science sounds dirty. Sophia. And so after Ison crosses the frost line, which is somewhere between Mars and Jupiter, it'll light up like a match. Or no, that's not a good analogy. It'll get all magnitude -ier. Man, this story only gets more and more interesting. Don't you agree? When will Ison return to sight and visibility? Nobody knows. But it could be any time between now and the end of August. No one knows. There are a lot of educated guesses, though. But we won't know until Ison shows her face. The Deep Impact spacecraft should be able to see it now. When we will get the data from the Deep Impact spacecraft, I can't tell you. Why someone named it Deep Impact? They got a funny sense of humor, man. I have noted before, they have weird motivations when they name stuff. Right, right? Deep impact. I've had a funny Jedi spider sense tingly funny feeling that this comet would be very special. And having NASA, the ESA, and all of science try and put every resource on icing makes me feel like I was right all along. Yes, it does. And watch out. Ego will get you. Or me. See, I think we all believe that this comet could be deep space magic, baby. And we got a fat flying V in the sun. We love the V. And on that note, let us take a look at the sun and the smaller version of our flying V. Now, in the last few Ison videos, I have noted that there is a strange flying V shape in the sun with a head and a tail in three-dimensional fashion. And it used to be the same shape. Now it's kind of changed shape, but it's still got the V. It's still interesting, party people. What will happen to Comet Ison is an open question to scientists who hope to learn more about what causes certain comets to flare brightly and others to fizzle and evaporate. See, science admits the dirty snowball theory is just a theory. We don't have anything directly to compare Ison to, said astronomer Matt Knight. Or like as Daniel Fisher pointed out in his excellent article on interplanetary eyes on the lookout for Comet Ison on the planetary.org blogs, survival is not guaranteed either. Well, this sounds pretty doomy, man. Whoa, wait, I skipped the line. Survival of the tiny nucleus less than four kilometers in diameter, according to the best Hubble imagers. What's that supposed to mean? Survival is not guaranteed that close to the sun either. Not only the solar heat, but even tidal forces will uneasily close to destructive. What? Not only the solar heat, but even tidal forces will be uneasily close to destructive. Oh, is that sentence correct? Or is that code? What? For that reason, plans of another emergency workshop or video conference in December were already mulled at the August meeting so that Ison's campaign could react promptly to the comet's fate. What? Sounds pretty doomy. An emergency workshop? Solar heat, tidal forces. That's a lot of telescopes. That's a lot of cameras. That's a lot of resources. That's a lot of manpower. That looks like a big fat flying V. Don't fear the V. The V is good. And she is still hiding. Her face behind the sun. The whole waiting for Ison to come back from behind the sun is pretty exciting. And at the NCIC conference workshop, there were some lovely ladies there. You guys, you scientists are some lucky guys. Okay, great. I think the whole figuring out how fast comets 
travel is cool. And who knows, maybe it's going a little faster, maybe it's going a little slower. Consolidated timeline. But come September, the icing campaign will take off, literally. Even as a balloon and a rocket launches are in preparation and numerous astronomical satellites will be called to duty in addition to ground-based telescopes and amateur astronomers invited to contribute to specific projects, this comet has moved into the crosshairs of science, not so much because of its potential, but not in any way guaranteed, coming great brightness and impressive tail. Ison's behavior in the past year has been puzzling. As a stupendously flat-like curve in the first half of 2013, interpretations at the workshop varied widely and ranged from a mostly dry dust ball soon to crumble to an ice-rich body that already underwent a prolonged outburst just fading back to normal. Survival of the tiny nucleus, less than four kilometers in diameter, according to the best Hubble images, is not guaranteed either. You got solar heat and tidal forces, destructive. Next in line after the deep impact is the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, MRO, or I guess you could switch the letters around to be more. So while both high-rise and the infrared instrument CRISM will be used during the comet's approach, a lot of guessing is involved in planning the exposures. Therefore, the MRO, the MORE team is happy to join Deep Impact on August 20th for some early remote observations of ISIN. This will translate into a poor resolution of high-rise on the comet of 150 kilometers per pixel. The signal-to-noise ratio won't be great. CRISM might not see anything at all. But still, both instrument teams are happy for this opportunity of a little trial run. Whoa. Is that foreshadowing? So we got more. We got ROM, CRISM, High Rise. Sweet. Cool names. The planned use of the High Rise camera on the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter for imaging Comet Ison as it approaches and hurries closely past Mars is not unprecedented. While optimized for scanning the Martian surface, a brightly highlit contrast target. The 50 centimeter telescope can also be used as an improvised astronomical telescope. Bubba, you, Bubba, Bubba, you barking with me? That's cool. A quite convincing portrait of Earth. Convincing? That's a weird word. The complex interplay of Ison's motion along its orbits and the fast movement in the low orbit ruined all attempts to stack the exposures through two filters to make it something presentable. The black and white image of Ison with the least trailing was pasted in gray, resulting in a hybrid black and white comet and color sky image that continues to confuse. Well, data confusing. 111 days till Ison reaches perihelion. Now I'm talking about nothing. I've over edited myself into a wall, and uh, I ain't nobody watch the Percy. It's a meteor shower with but dogs. Why must you be cruel? Why? Dang it. Soil science sounds dirty. You know, that big infrared telescope that's flying around a big old plane by the South Pole. Sophia. I, sun, returns. And we got a fat flying V in the sun. We love the V. Deep space magic, baby. There is so much data in the data. Do you know what I'm saying? And it continues to get more fascinating as it goes. So yeah, NASA. All hands on deck in this thing, all eyes to the sky. So in summary, we've still got a flying V. We got all hands on deck, all resources, all cameras, all telescopes, all satellites. Professionally, we have satellite deep impact up next to see it. Should be seeing it now. When they give us data, I have no idea. And when will the Earth-based amateur astronomers see it? I don't know. There's even a countdown over at GLP. For Ison. You gotta watch out for Dr. Astro Mutt. That guy is a doom junkie. And astonishers, if, if they could do a workshop, uh, we could do one too. I think, right? If you're new, subscribe to me on the YouTube and you can always talk to us at the Facebooker or on the Twittery Tweet. Though I don't get on the Twitter that much. For some reason, it always makes me feel weird. And I'm really horrible. I'm the horriblest, worstest at Twitter flirting. Stay cool. I really poured all the maple syrup and butter into this one. I hope you liked it. There you go. A sweet treat from your main man, T. You're welcome now. I gotta go. Yeah, hey, baby, now. Yeah, well, it's been fun, and I still have shit tons to talk about. Yeah, that's true. But I gotta go enjoy this Saturday. So I gotta pull the plug somewhere. So I'll see you guys soon. Me getting a good date for the crap. Whatever stupid love life. Man.
can't do it. Okay, God bless everyone.